God gave you a dream and it's your responsibility to keep that dream alive. So let me tell you what will destroy it faster than you can blink. The first dream killer is being impatient. Destiny takes time. Destiny takes time. Don't be impatient. The Bible says, let patience have its perfect work. That's one of those verses that gets stuck in my throat every time I say it. Why? Because we live in a very impatient society. But when it comes to the divine dream that God has planted in your life, be patient. Destiny takes time. God shows you a glimpse of your destiny, but He doesn't show you all of the details in high definition between here and there. If He did, you'd probably run in fear. We grow impatient because we want the end right now. We start behaving as though the end has already arrived. When God shows you a glimpse of your future, you need to know that He is not only preparing you, but He's also preparing the details of your tomorrow. If you get out in front of Him, you're going to cause yourself a lot of heartache and pain because you're there ahead of schedule. Be patient. God's ways are not our ways. His time is not our time. And when you get impatient with God, do you know you don't hurry Him along? God says, I've got eternity to wait. Go ahead, help yourself. We get impatient because we say, oh, I want it now. But if God gave it to you now, it would destroy you. Oh, I know what God wants to do. Let me just help him out. Jesus said in John 15 and 5, apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. When you get impatient, you are running headfirst into heartache. Be patient. The second thing you need to know that will kill your dream is refusal to listen to godly counsel. If you want to know how to accomplish the dream of your life, find someone else who has done that and ask them for advice. Proverbs 12 and 15, it says, The fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. One of the fastest ways to kill your dream is not to humble yourself enough to learn from someone else's experience. Be smart enough to take their advice. If your dream is to start a successful business, go find a successful businessman and ask him what he did. If your dream is to have a successful marriage, go find somebody who's been married 50, 55, 60 years and ask them what they did. But one of the most conceited and arrogant things that you'll ever do is believe that you already know and refuse to ask for advice. The third thing that you can do that will kill your dream is be persuaded by ungodly people. Not listening to godly people will kill your dream, but also being persuaded by ungodly people will kill your dream. David said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. The counsel is simply this. When godless people give you advice, recognize that that advice is void of godly principles and character. Don't let ungodly people talk you into behaving like an unbeliever. It'll cost you your dream. The fourth thing that will kill your dream is doubt. If you want to destroy anything that God will ever give you, all you have to learn to say is, I doubt that. God wants to give you blessings, I doubt that. God wants to do great things, I doubt that. God's going to move, I doubt that. The first chapter of the book of James, the man who doubts will receive nothing from the Lord. Even when the whole world says that your dream will never come to pass, you can keep believing in that dream and God will honor that dream as long as you don't allow doubt to interfere. The fifth thing that can destroy your dream is quitting at the first sign of trouble. Everybody believes that they've got a divine dream and that because they've got a divine dream, it's going to be easy sailing from here on out. And the first time they get in a struggle, they forfeit. People get a vision of God's future in their life and they take off with power and purpose and enthusiasm. They start to walk out God's plan and then something happens that causes struggle. 
Let me tell you something. Nobody likes struggle. That's why they call it struggle. Listen to me. If hell's not fighting against you, they're walking with you. you. Say, well, I just wish it wasn't so hard. If it was easy, anybody could do it. When struggle comes, consider a great cloud of witnesses that has gone before you. Hear them cheering for you from the balconies of heaven. Hear them shouting, press on, child of God. You're closer than you think you are. Press on. Hell can't defeat you. Press on. The enemy has been defeated. Press on. God is fighting for you. Press on. You're more than a conqueror through Christ. Don't you dare quit on your dream. Give God a chance to prove that he can still do the impossible. The sixth thing that will kill your dream is focusing on what you are not. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God designed you and engineered you to be who you are because he's the one who planned your destiny. But the quickest way to kill your dream is to talk about what's not available rather than focusing on what is. God didn't give you a dream to intimidate you with the impossible. He gave you a dream to show you that all things are possible. His plan is not a source of torment about what might have been. His plan is to empower you with what will be. Don't whine about what you're not. Start telling the world everything that you are. Start telling the world, I am a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am not powerless, but I am filled with the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave. It lives in me. I'm not pathetic and empty. I am filled with the abundance of El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. I have a holy heritage. I am filled with the spiritual DNA of those who defeated giants, who crossed the sea on dry ground, who called fire from heaven, who made the dead live again. I feel like something good is about to happen because my God is the one who created this day and I will rejoice and be exceedingly glad because he gave it to me. He filled my heart with a dream. It's not about where I am. It's not about what I'm going through. It's about what I'm going to. I'm headed to a land that is filled with milk and honey. I'm going to a place that is full of favor. I'm going to receive his goodness and his mercy. I'll declare his works in the land of the living because that's just the kind of God I serve. Tell the world what kind of God you have and what kind of child you are. The seventh thing that will kill your dream is unforgiveness. If your dream is going to become a reality, you're going to have to unleash the power of forgiveness don't let unforgiveness assassinate your future today you have a choice to make you can look back at your past and you can point the finger you can say if they hadn't done me wrong I wouldn't be the way I am today and if you do you can kiss your dream goodbye or you can make the choice to believe that no matter how deep the wound, God can heal it. His plan for your life is not hindered by what others have done to you. If you'll forgive them, that dream will soar into the future and bring with it blessings that you've never known before. Are you killing your dream today? Are you killing your dream because you doubt? Are you killing your dream because you won't forgive? Are you killing your dream because you'd rather walk in the path of wicked men than listen to the counsel of the godly? God has a dream for you. It's yours and yours alone. But with that dream, you have the responsibility to keep it alive. What is a dream? It's a glimpse of your destiny. And if God has you in one hand and your destiny in the other, I assure you, your dream will come true.